my next year and tell him he led. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Look at your neighbor and say to them, thank God for the blessings. Amen. You may be seated. Thank God for the blessings. How many know that you're blessed? Thank God for the blessings. Real blessings only come from the Lord. Famous scripture of David, he said, I look to the hills, which come with my help. He said, all of my help comes from the Lord. Blessed is defined as to worship or to praise, to bestow goodness and favor, and to invoke such qualities upon one another. In other words, when you begin to study the word blessed and blessings, the word blessed is really not about material possessions. Blessed is about a state of mind that motivates you to do good unto others. And because God is good all the time, God is always motivated to bless his children. It's a blessing to be a child of God. Because when you are a child of God, you understand that you are part of the heavenly family. And then when you are part of the heavenly family, when it's supper time, you are guaranteed a seat at his table. Amen. David said he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It's difficult for us to often think of blessings in terms of a spiritual blessing because many of us have been driven by the societal need to emphasize the self, our individual needs, instead of understanding that God supplies all of our needs. The Bible also tells us that he supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And so that we have a God who never runs out of blessings. He teaches us that he has a cattle on a thousand hills. He has the whole world in his hands. Another psalm says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. And so in other words, no matter how successful you think you have become, you cannot retain all of the blessings of God in the palm of your hand. Because our hand is simply comprised of five fingers on each hand. And if we take both hands and put them together, many of us can't even fill our bellies with a handful of water. Uh, we can't even retain enough blessings to feed ourselves. That's why we have to understand that the blessings that we even hold in our hands, they come from the Lord. And so when I look back over my life and I begin to think things over, when I took credit for things I really didn't deserve and I received things that I didn't really deserve and I felt that I deserved things that I really didn't need, I begin to understand that it was God that was passing out blessings to me. And when we have been blessed, we have to remember that we have to be a blessing to somebody else. When applied to God, the terms imply homage or adoration offered in gratitude. When God gives us a blessing, uh, he is not looking uh, to be especially aggrandizing himself. Uh, he just wants us to say thank you. Uh, God is looking for us to be receiving the blessing with open arms, but also lifting up our hands, uh, our head, and our hearts to be able to say thank you. It's hard for some folk to say thank you because everything tends to have to be about them. But when you realize that blessings don't start with you, that you are a receiver of the blessing and not an arbiter of the blessing, that blessings don't start with you, but you are a steward of the blessings of God. And when you recognize that blessings must go through you and circulate in the earth, then you will be able to give glory back to him. Christians have an unlimited amount of blessings that we can't even count if we tried. The Bible tells us that David said that if he had a thousand tongues, he couldn't praise him enough. You can't measure your blessings by the size of your bank account. You can't measure your blessings by the square footage of your house. You can't measure your blessings by the number of shoes, pantyhose, and dresses in your closet because your blessings are both seen and unseen. They're seen 
by the natural man, but they're not, uh, they're, they're unseen by those who are not spiritual. When those who are spiritual understand that blessings come from God, they'll look at you and say, you are blessed. You got your health and your strength. You need to put your shoes on your head. And you need to put your shirt on your feet. You're clothed and in your right mind. Problem that we experience today is that we often forget about the manifold blessings that God has already bestowed upon us. These are the things that are geometric and they are progressing, and you keep unfolding and unfolding and keep rolling out the scroll. You couldn't count the number of blessings that God has given unto us. Jesus told John that our names of the redeemed are in the Lamb's book of life. John said he saw 144,000 coming through one gate, but then he also said he saw a number that he could not count. I'm in that number. The 144,000 are the children of Israel, but the other number that he could not count. I'm one of those blessings because I don't deserve what God has given unto me. I've learned to praise God for everything that he has done for me. When I look back over my life and I think things over, I can say I'm truly blessed. Thank God for the testimony. God wants us to know that he is the source of all blessings. And to give him praise for the blessings that we already have. Praise and blessings go hand in hand. If you know that you're blessed, you should praise God. And if you don't know that you're blessed, you probably are not praising God. So when you know that you know that you know, you say thank God for all you've done for me. Our misguided desires for the favor of man and the desire for material wealth often lead us from missing the mark of praising God for everything that we that He has done. We give ourselves too much credit and we don't give God enough credit in order to truly understand where blessings come from. All of us in here are in need of a blessing. It may not be the same kind of blessing, but we are in need of a blessing. As a pastor of Mount Omega, I'm standing in the need of a blessing. And so therefore, I must fully understand that while I can ask others to pray for me, they can only be the stewards of the blessings that will truly come from God. While I may be standing in the need of a blessing, I can tell somebody about my trials and tribulations, but they can only be a steward of the agency of what God will ultimately do for me. And if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be today? If you look back over your life, there were some people that helped you, but they were only instruments of praise for the most high God. You can praise God for your neighbor, but you need to thank God for the God that was in your neighbor for being used to be a blessing unto you. Amen. We can begin a new life when we understand that all blessings come from the Lord. Matthew 14 records the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Bible scholars have identified that this is one, the only miracle that is recorded in all four Gospels. If we read the synoptic text, we will understand that each Gospel writer has a specific part of the story that he's emphasizing. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus was so good at blessing folk, Matthew recorded it twice. He recorded the feeding of the four thousand uh, in the plains uh, and also the feeding of the five thousand uh, while he was on the mount. And my brothers and sisters this story unfolds for us uh, what true blessings is really all about. Uh, but before Jesus blesses uh, the, the multitude he withdraws. Uh, he draws back from the crowds because he had been teaching them. Uh, and as he withdrew for the crowds uh, there were several reasons that we must understand uh, before we get at the 
seat of the blessing, while we also must learn to do as our ancestors did, as they said, steal away. They learned to steal away to Jesus because they recognized that they ain't got long to stay. Jesus stole away for a little while, and there were reasons why he withdrew. It was the report of John's death. John the Baptist had been beheaded by Herod, and because he was beheaded, Jesus was grieving the loss of his cousin. He was sad at the loss of the great prophet that per proclaimed that he was going to repair the way of the Lord and make his path straight. The second reason was is that there was growing antagonism against the king Herod. Herod was a wicked man and he wanted to, to carry out a path of destruction and deceit upon the people that God had chosen him to lead. And thirdly, the disciples needed rest after their long journey of going into the highways and hedges. Jesus Jesus needed to get alone with his disciples to teach them about everything uh, that they had experienced. Uh, and so while he had stole away from the crowds, uh, he had prayed that God would use him uh, to teach his disciples uh, about how to be a blessing unto somebody else. Uh, and that's why we need to steal away uh, so that we can get out of self long enough uh, to see how God is going to use us uh, as an instrument of praise. Uh, and we would just appeal back to this flesh just for a moment uh, and feel back this muscle and, and look under the knees of uh, our anatomy. Our stomach uh, is shaped like an instrument. Uh, our stomach is simply uh, an instrument in which we are designed uh, intelligently by an almighty God uh, to praise God. Uh, so even if you can't sing, uh, you still got an instrument. Uh, even if you can't put out a good tune or a good note, uh, you still can say hallelujah uh, because you are an instrument that has been designed to praise God. If we are children of God, if we learn how to praise Him as we were designed according to our purpose, it is important that we get alone from time to time also to receive and hear God's voice and refresh ourselves both physically and mentally. You ought to learn to pray for our missionaries in the world because being a missionary is hard work, y'all. You got to go to people who don't know anything about God and take the same passion that you have for God and share that with people who have ears to hear. And sometimes we don't just have missionaries in Africa and South America. Sometimes we got missionaries in the sanctuary because that's what we sit to who don't have a reason yet to praise God. But I got a scripture for you. It said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. This text teaches us that there are lessons from the miracle that was performed. The first lesson is that Christ can take our little and make it much. Old preachers used to say little becomes a lot when you put it in his hand. The second lesson is that whatever he blesses, he breaks. Are we willing to be broken in the face of God before we receive our blessing? Thirdly, people today are in the wilderness of sin and need a man by the name of Jesus Christ. Christ can overcome every difficulty and feed the multitudes. And the disciples had many excuses of why they didn't think that the multitude should be fed. Isn't that just like church folk? You got to learn to have a sense of humor when you read the Bible and be able to connect it to the church folk of the day. The disciples wanted to send the people away that they may find food of their own. But when they wanted to send them away because of not having enough money and not being in the right place, Place and not being the right time, Christ took what they had and met the need. And he would do the same for us today. He ain't worried about you being in the right family and having the right amount of money and having the right address and being the right day of the week. Today is your day to be blessed. Thank you, God, for the blessings brings us closer to a real understanding of our true purpose, and that is that we were created to praise God. The text raises the question, how do we thank God for the blessings? The first lesson is you have to show compassion. Touch your neighbor and say, show compassion. 
Verse 14 says to us very clearly that as he stepped ashore, he saw a huge crowd and felt compassion for them, and he healed their sick. Many people had come from far and wide because they heard about a carpenter from a place called Nazareth that was able to heal the sick and to raise the dead, who was able to perform miracles as of the great prophets of old. And because they had heard about this man, because they had sickness in their own bodies, they had lame in their own families, they brought their sickness to Jesus, and he, because he cared about them, he did something about their problem. You ought to be able to have enough compassion to care about folk when they are in need. God is allowing you to experience the burdens of fallen humanity, a fallen world, a world where people shoot down airplanes out of the sky for no reason at all, a world where children are left abandoning their own homes, a world where people don't even learn how to talk through their differences without reaching for a gun and pulling the trigger. We got to learn how to have have some compassion. Compassion is to feel for the needs of another, to experience great affection. As Jesus saw the blind, the lame, those who are covered with leprosy, he had compassion on them, which means tears probably rolled down his face, which means that his heart was grieving when he saw their condition. He felt compassion. Touch your neighbor say, felt compassion. He felt compassion for them, and then he healed their sick. So glad that God has shown me over and over again uh, through a global experience of ministry that it's not about me. Uh, it's not about what's going on with me or even that's going to go on through me uh, because I need to learn that every experience in life uh, is about me as a Christian identifying uh, with the sacrifice of Jesus the Christ. Uh, he sacrificed his own time, talent, and gave up a seat uh, in a place called heaven uh, that he may come about uh, and see about our situation and feel our pain, feel our struggle, understand the plight of the human condition and teach us how to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. I'm so glad that Jesus shows us how to step out of self and care for others so that we will learn how to meet their needs. Show compassion. The second lesson is we have to share the crumbs. To so today we say share the crumbs. Verse 18 teaches us very clearly that Jesus said, bring them here to me. John's gospel tells us that when he asked for the inventory of the food pantry, he said, what do you have? And the disciples said, all we have here is a child's lunch. <laughs> Amen. Uh, a child that doesn't have a grown man's appetite. My son, uh, he has a pretty big appetite, but he still can eat what daddy eats. <laughs> and so when a child's lunch was presented before the disciples, uh, they didn't think that it was enough uh, to feed the 5,000 men and also women and children. They were in a desert place. They were in a place that was far from all of the local restaurants and the local fish markets. They were in a place that was dry and it was not even able to produce any any crops or grains. And all they had was two fish and five barley loaves, which are just the same as a big graham cracker. They, they just had just a child's lunch. And Jesus, instead of sending the people away, he says, bring them to me. What he does for all of us is he takes our crumbs and he makes a blessing out of them. It's amazing how the grandmothers of old were able to stretch out a meal and feed seven and eight and nine children. That's because they had the wisdom of God. They didn't have a lot, but little becomes a lot when you put it in the hands of wisdom. Everybody always had something to eat. And Shirley Caesar said about her mother, she said, it wasn't much, but the Lord saw us through. You got to learn how to take the crumbs that you have, the broken stuff, the stuff that's falling from the table, and take it in your hands and give it back to the Lord. Problem with so many of us, the more God blesses us, 
the more selfish that we become. We are like dogs fighting over scraps when they fall from the master's table. We want to go ahead and carve out our space and begin to have some elbow room and keep everybody away from the crumbs that God has given us. But God wants us to share the crumbs. Such a name as say share the crumbs. Jesus said, bring them to me. And as I look with my imagination at the 5,000 men, which probably also had another 5,000 women, and also another 5,000 children, Jesus is staring into the eyes of 15,000 people looking at 30,000 eyes, and he's trying to figure out how he's going to not only teach his disciples about the power of God, but also minister to the needs of those who are in need. And I'm so glad that Jesus is not intimidated by church folk. I'm so glad that Jesus is not discouraged by people who want to send folk in need away. Jesus has enough courage and enough compassion, not only to show compassion, not only to share the crumbs, but thirdly and lastly, you got to learn to speak with confidence. Such a name as they speak. Verse 19 says that he commanded uh, the crowds to sit down uh, on the grass uh, and he took the five loaves uh, and the two fish. Uh, he looked up to heaven uh, and uh, he blessed them. Uh, that means uh, that he spoke well of. Uh, he gave thanks. Uh, hallelujah Jesus. Uh, he said uh, give thanks uh, with a grateful heart. Uh, he said give thanks uh, to the Holy One. Give thanks because He has given us Jesus Christ. But that's not how the story ends. He blessed the bread and He blessed the fish. He broke them in half. Amen, somebody. He kept breaking until He could feed the 5,000 men and the women and the children. He keeps on breaking right before us uh, until we have manifold blessings. Uh, anybody here uh, realize that he keeps breaking uh, and blessing uh, and breaking and blessing uh, and blessing and breaking uh, each and every day uh, of our lives. Uh, everybody ate uh, and the Bible says they weren't satisfied uh, and I'm so satisfied uh, with my Savior uh, because he's taking care of me uh, even when I can't take care uh, of myself. Uh, they picked up the 12 baskets uh, that they had left over uh, and I'm so glad uh, that not only will he bless you uh, he also give you some leftovers. Uh, everybody here uh, glad they can go back uh, to the refrigerator uh, after Sunday meal uh, and say thank God uh, for the leftovers. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that's glad that they're blessed? Uh, I'm so glad uh, that he's blessing uh, each and every day. Uh, look at me. Uh, you look at our blessing. Uh, look at your neighbor. Uh, your neighbor is blessed. Uh, look at your children. Uh, your children are blessed. Uh, be not dismayed. Uh, whatever be tired you. Uh, God will. Uh, God will. Uh, God will. Uh, take care. Your neighbor said, neighbor, I'm blessed. 